In the memorable month of July 1969, Neil Armstrong took his historic one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind, cementing his status as an American hero and cultural icon. The success of Apollo 11 marked a significant milestone, allowing humanity to finally set foot on our closest celestial neighbor. However, just three short years later, in 1972, the lunar missions came to an end. Welcome back to Mars Discoveries. Today, we will delve into the intriguing question, why did NASA halt its lunar exploration missions? But before we dive into the reasons behind NASA's lunar pursuits, let's rewind a bit and ponder why these lunar missions were initiated in the first place. The 1960s were characterized by the intense rivalry of the Cold War where the United States and the Soviet Union engaged in a fierce technological competition within the arms race and the space race. As nuclear weapons grew in destructive power, the absence of an actual conflict led both nations to redirect their rocket technologies toward a new frontier, space exploration. The Soviets swiftly surged ahead in the space race, launching the first ever satellite, Sputnik, into orbit in 1957. In the same year, they sent the first living creature, Laika the dog, into space with Sputnik 2. In 1959, the Soviet probe Luna 2 became the first spacecraft to reach the moon. In 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space, followed by Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman in space two years later. In contrast, the United States, devoid of a space program at the time, did not send a woman to space until Sally Ride's mission in 1983. It was the Cold War that prompted the formation of NASA in 1958. With the Soviets achieving several groundbreaking milestones in space exploration, it was now the United States' turn to make a significant impact. Initially, they briefly considered an alternative plan called Project A-119, which involved detonating a nuclear bomb on the moon but this idea was wisely abandoned. When NASA was established, the decision was made to send astronauts to the moon rather than weaponry, understanding that the public would not support a nuclear explosion in space. The race to the moon was on, and the United States was playing catch-up. In 1966, NASA received its largest ever share of the U.S. federal budget, accounting for 4.5%. This amounted to $5.9 billion at the time, equivalent to approximately $43 billion today. To provide some perspective, NASA's 2019 budget represented less than 0.5% of the federal budget, totaling $21 billion. In reality, the Apollo program, while a monumental achievement for science and humanity, was labeled by critics as a costly publicity stunt designed to out of the Soviet Union. As soon as Apollo 11 claimed victory in the space race, the government began searching for reasons to terminate it and save money. The entire Apollo space program, which concluded with Apollo 17 in 1972, cost roughly $150 billion in today's currency. While the space race effectively concluded in 1969, the Cold War persisted, leading the government's focus elsewhere. However, NASA, established with the explicit goal of landing a man on the moon, never lost interest in eventually returning to our closest celestial neighbor. It simply lost the state funding required to pursue such missions. Nonetheless, with NASA appearing to scale back its lunar efforts, other space agencies worldwide turned their attention to lunar exploration. Until 1990, lunar missions were largely dominated by the United States and the Soviet Union. However, the launch of Hyten by ISAS, Japan's former space program, signaled the growing involvement of other nations. Japan's current space program JAXA, as well as the European Space Agency and ISRO in India, have all actively pursued lunar studies. On an international scale, the shift away from sending humans to the moon does not equate to a loss of interest in lunar exploration. Probes and rovers have proven to be more cost-effective and comparably low-risk alternatives to human missions. These robotic missions do not require food, water, or oxygen, and there is no threat of human illness, injury, or fatality. Notably, the Chain 4 spacecraft, sent by China's official space program, CNSA, became the first craft to land on the enigmatic dark side of the moon, 
Some view this as the onset of a new space race between China and the United States, while others see it as a shift toward a collaborative approach to space exploration. While China pushes the boundaries of space exploration, NASA has not been idle since 1972. The agency reportedly has plans to return humans to the moon by the late 2020s. NASA launched the Constellation program in 2005 to revitalize lunar initiatives, though it was subsequently canceled in 2011 as part of government spending cuts. Following the conclusion of the Apollo missions, several developments have taken place. The International Space Station, ISS, emerged as a significant project, emphasizing international collaboration in space exploration. Operated jointly by five different space agencies worldwide, the ISS provides a valuable platform for studying the effects of living and working in outer space. In contrast, the moon's desolation makes it a less appealing prospect, diverting NASA's funding elsewhere. The moon is not the sole destination vying for NASA's attention. The enticing prospect of Mars has captured the imagination of many. The Mars race, while progressing at a slower pace than the original space race, continues to draw interest. NASA has sent various probes and rovers to the Red Planet and has plans to send humans there. Furthermore, private companies like Boeing, Virgin, and SpaceX have become significant players in this race. The global focus has decidedly shifted from the moon, which now seems relatively closer. Today, more distant dreams, demanding substantial time, expertise, and financial resources, have taken center stage. Finally, in addition to the practical reasons, some outlandish theories have been proposed to explain why NASA ceased lunar missions. These include conspiracy theories asserting that the moon landings never happened, speculations about lunar missions being abandoned due to fear of aliens, and notions that the moon's dark side conceals extraterrestrial spaceships or that the moon itself is a hollow spaceship awaiting launch. While these are intriguing ideas, they are not grounded in established scientific principles. The most plausible explanation, however, revolves around the financial challenges associated with human lunar exploration. NASA's reduced budget and the increasing demand for exploration beyond Earth make lunar missions a more complex undertaking for the agency to manage. Despite renewed interest in lunar exploration, the primary challenge remains the availability of funding. Thank you for joining us on this journey to unravel the mysteries behind why NASA doesn't go to the moon anymore. If you found this video informative and thought-provoking, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more intriguing content. We'll continue to explore the wonders of space and science, so stay tuned for our upcoming videos. Until then, keep your eyes on the stars and let your curiosity reach for the moon.